Okay, in this uh, video we want to talk about chain sharpening and in particular I want to introduce you to a few really helpful tools that we have available for you to use. Um, probably the first most helpful of the tools to consider is a vice system. Uh, whether that be your, your bench vice in the workshop at home or in the shed or whether it be a stump vice. Um, we have a number of different stump vices uh, like this. This is one of the, the larger, heavier ones. It's always a good idea. Bigger is a little better when it comes to holding things. Although we do have a little compact version as well. Um, so when you are file sharpening, because this is the method that we're going to be talking about, to have the saw being held firmly so it's not moving around so that you can control the stroke of your file is one of the most important um, steps to get right uh, when, when sharpening a chain. Okay, so we're going to talk about two uh, chain sharpening kit options. These are the two here. This is what we call our two-in-one file guide. And this one here is the more traditional uh, classical file kit. So um, we'll sort of look at both options to see which is uh, perhaps more suited for you. It makes sense to start with the old school before we talk about something a little newer. Um, you'll notice that I'm wearing gloves. It's good practice, especially when I'm working on the full chisel chain like this. It's uh, uh, pretty easy to cut yourself. So good practice to, to wear some gloves. Um, when you're working with a chain, if you're going to turn it over, um, notice I'm pulling from top away from the saw. I'm not going to grab the chain and pull back that way. If you slip, you know, it's really easy to cut yourself. Um, when you're sharpening a chain, start off first with just getting the chain tensioned correctly. We've already put a good little video out there on that. You'll see it on our YouTube channel. Um, if the chain is loose and floppy, it also makes it quite hard to sharpen. So keep it uh, tensioned correctly and then you want to look over the teeth and try find uh, an obvious area where you'd say well, that side is more dull than the other side um, and I guess where the tooth is more damaged uh, that's kind of where you want to start and then you want to make sure you uh, sharpen all the teeth back to the same. Now ideally you don't let your chain get to a terrible state where You've got some highly blunt or damaged teeth. Now we would always recommend that you sharpen uh, frequently um, so you sort of maintain a sharp edge rather than sharpen a blunt chain. If you let your chain get really dull that's a lot of strokes of the file to try get it back right but yet if you just every tank full or every two tank fulls of uh, gas that you're putting in it get the file back out and, and touch up that tooth well then it's much easier to keep that sharp edge. Anyway, this chain's done a little bit of work. I was cutting up a little bit of pine and it was a bit dirty, so I've got some dull teeth and particularly more on this side. Um, and this area here is probably the worst. So what I generally do is I get my marker. Uh, this is a, a good little tip. Just mark off uh, a left and right hand cutter. That gives me a starting point of where, um, where to start from. Okay, back to our classical kit. So in the kit comes a filing guide, so your old school filing guide system. Um, the benefit of using the guide versus just a freehand file is that the, the file itself is kept exactly at the right height, uh, height in the tooth. It doesn't drop down too low or set up too high and it gives you that perfect sort of hook or shape that you need in each of the cutters. Uh, when you are uh, freehand filing just with a plain round file, um, if you're really experienced and practiced, it's, it's no problem. But if you're someone that does sharpening perhaps a little more infrequently, then it's uh, a good practice to, to utilize a guide that holds that file at the correct height to give you that correct um, hook or shape in the tooth. So uh, guide and the file. The files of course are replaceable and the guide also has some some filing um, angles on it. Uh, there is a flat file 
and there is a depth gauge setting tool. So I'll explain those as we go, go along. All right, so I'm gonna start, uh, and generally good practice makes it easier to file the teeth that are opposite you. So you, we have left and right hand cutters. So the teeth that are on the other side of me, and I'm gonna start, uh, for me, just on the other side of where I've marked my teeth. And what I'm gonna effectively do is I, I push away when I'm filing. I don't drag the file back into the tooth. And that allows me to push away and sharpen a nice, good, clean edge. Uh, so ideally, what I'm trying to do, it's really important to keep consistency of tooth sizing. You don't want some teeth being shorter and other being longer. So I generally try to count the number of strokes and I try to keep that consistent even with all the, the teeth that I'm doing. Um, so I'll do, in this example, um, four strokes per tooth. I always finish with that push away. Then, of course, to save you the boredom of watching me go around every single tooth, I repeat that the whole way around until I get to that little tooth that I've marked with my marker. Then I can know that I've done the whole way around. Okay, so I would normally do one whole complete side, of course, and then I can then pick the saw up out of the vise, rotate it around, and then do the other complete side. Um, what I would like to introduce you to is the idea of, of the two-in-one guide. To explain why we call it a two-in-one, it helps to understand a little bit more about what uh, these tools here are for, the depth gauge setting tool and the flat file. In the front of each cutter is a little part we call the depth gauge. So we take the depth gauge setting tool and we sit it on top. Then we take our flat file and any of the depth gauge that's sitting proud of the actual gauge of the tool, I can then take off. Now that sets the depth gauge to the cutting edge of the tooth to be perfect and allows the tooth to take the correct and optimal shaving uh, as we go. So, um, it is important from time to time to do those depth gauges. Uh, it's something that you have to not do every time that you're sharpening with this kit here, but from, periodically we certainly need to make sure we do it because the tooth is tapering back on an angle. So as the tooth gets sharpened back, it actually gets a little bit shorter and that's why we need to bring that little depth gauge down at the front. Okay, so you can see it's a little bit more involved with this classical kit with that uh, file and guide for doing the teeth and then periodically the depth gauge setting uh, tools. Now the two-in-one, why we call it the two-in-one is it's got round files for sharpening the actual teeth and then there's a flat file in the centre for uh, doing the depth gauge and every time I sharpen the tooth I'm setting the depth gauge to the correct height at the same time. So it's um, a really simplified, easy way of doing it. Okay, so we have to look uh, at the image at the front here because I need to see uh, the picture of the chainsaw looks the same and that means I know that the uh, tool is sitting in the right place. really easy to get the angles because where the angles the filing angles are set in the handle so if I bring it there it locks it in place and that's my correct filing angle and that's doing the tooth 
and the depth gauge at the same time. I hold it flat, 90 degrees. I don't tip it that way, don't tip it that way. I hold likewise with the traditional file guide. You hold it 90 degrees. I like the two-in-one file guide because it's uh, got a really clear indication of your filing angle. You've got uh, quite a good handle either side of it, so it helps um, keep good stability and uh, direction of that um, of your file and the filing angle. Okay, so likewise, I would repeat the whole way around that side of the chain uh, and of course have to turn the saw around to do the other side. Um, yeah, so that's a, a relatively quick review of um, some of the more commonly used sharpening tools for still. Uh, these are all available on our website, uh, stillshop.co.nz uh, and you'll find plenty more information uh, there uh, as to what you need. Um, the other thing to remember of course is there's not one filing kit that fits all. You need to know the, the pitch or size of the chain in order to get the correct size file or filing kit and so uh, we put as much information as we can on the site to help guide you there as well but of course if, you, if you're a bit stuck for there give your local steel shop a call and uh, they'll quite quickly tell you, based on the model that you've got, uh, what the correct kit that uh, you need is. Thanks for watching.